looking at the water cycle. Just so that we remind ourselves what the water cycle is, on your tables there are some sheets. I want you to talk to the person next to you and see if you can explain the water cycle. The water turns into water vapour as it is heated and rises to the air. This process is known as evaporation. I think it's that one. one. Yeah. yeah. Exam-based assessments present a snapshot of pupils' abilities at a single point in time. In a bid to provide primary teachers with a longer-term picture of pupils' progress, the QCA has piloted a new system of assessment that is now being rolled out across the country. Assessing Pupils' Progress, or APP, provides teachers with a cross-curricular framework for ongoing assessment of pupils' abilities in core subjects. At St Monica Junior School in Southampton, Year 5 teacher Angie Sykes is using a geography lesson to assess her class's writing abilities. Your task is to write a story explaining the water cycle and the WILF is to use geographical language. During this geography lesson there were two objectives. I wanted from a geography point of view to see whether they understood the water cycle and could use the correct vocabulary but from an APP point of view I wanted to assess how well they could use paragraphs. They'd already been taught how to paragraph and why you use paragraphs in literacy a few months ago and this was a chance for me to see whether they could actually apply that knowledge. You've got to imagine you're a water droplet. You are going to write a story that explains your journey through that water cycle, okay? You've got to write down what happens to you and why it happens, because we're being really clever here. We're doing a bit of literacy. We're doing an explanation, but we're making it more interesting. So we're turning it into a story as well. APP allows Angie to build up a picture of how pupils like Jack perform across each term. These are the assessment guidelines for writing. Um, across the top you've got the different assessment focuses, so the different aspects of writing that are involved that you can assess. Down the side you've got the different levels. Jack is working at about a level four, so I've got the assessment guidelines for level three and level four. Um, the ticks and the, the highlighted parts are where I found evidence for that bullet point in that particular assessment focus, then I've ticked it off to show that I've got evidence for it. Where it's highlighted, that's where I'm confident that I've seen enough evidence that he's very secure in that. The different colours match up to autumn, spring and summer, so the different terms, so I can see where he's progressed and the areas that he needs to work on. Hi, my name's Jack and I'm a water droplet. I live in the sea with my friends and family. Um, in terms of levels, I'd put this for AF3 at a level 3. He's got an opening, so he's got the opening clearly signalled there. First, I swim to the surface with my friends when the sun is out. I get really hot and turn into a gas, then I get evaporated. He's sequenced the ideas, he's got the time connectors, he's got then first, so that's clear that he knows the order of the water cycle. Um, and the points are related to each other, that he's put them next to each other so he hasn't skipped from evaporation to precipitation back to evaporation. There are four meanders from the source to the mouth. I went round two of them before I entered my home again. This is my day, I hope you enjoyed it. As the first step to ensuring assessments are in line with those of other teachers, Angie and colleague Laura Fielder moderate each other's marking. Both teachers have been covering another literacy focus in class, guided reading. So what judgments did you make? Um, across most of the assessment focuses, I've put her down as a level three. Okay, now when we look at poems, we try to look at whether they've got a rhyming pattern or not. The river's a hoarder and he buries down deep those little treasures that he wants to keep. Out of those two, which one do you prefer? <laughs> I like the second one better because at the end it describes the ocean that says to the great, the great grey ocean. Excellent. I'm not sure about whether she's a level three or a level four. Um, she's shown some really kind of high quality answers for them. This is difficult because this says inference is often correct but not always rooted in the text. So she might actually be, is she doing that? I mean, is she, can she 
find the evidence in the text and she's not just making it up. No, yeah, she can definitely find the evidence in the text. Because so. this is like a negative and you don't necessarily want to tick it because yeah. it's a negative if she, can, if she doesn't do it. Yeah. To be a high three, she needs to have evidence in the level above. Yeah. So, and at the moment, there's a bit in level four in the different assessment focuses, but I don't think it's enough to say that she's a high no. three. So your initial judgment, secure three, I'm happy. Yep. I'm happy with that. Okay, yeah. Excellent. As a further step towards regulating her assessments, once a term, Angie meets with other teachers in her LEA for an external moderation session. Each teacher brings examples of their assessments along with the work on which these are based. <laughs> Need a cup of tea. To begin with, they make their own assessments of each other's pupils using the examples of work provided. It's then a case of comparing notes. Where there's disagreement on the levels assigned for each assessment focus, the group must return to the evidence supplied by the teacher as support for their original assessment. So what are we going to go for? More people went for three. I think I might have been a bit generous. This is the first one that I did. The teachers have basically filled in um, a, a guidelines form where they have highlighted where they feel that the, the child is achieving. They back this up with evidence by producing, showing work that shows this, which is evidence for it. Um, some of the schools have provided contextualisation sheets which show us whether the work is done independently and how much support the children have gone, because that is evidence of whether this is a weak whether this is weak evidence or strong evidence, we need to know how independent the, the children are. The two examples of writing letters were very similar and I wondered if they'd either just been taught it or if they had like a frame to use, which is why I didn't go for level four. So when we come together in discussion, we look at the quality of the evidence, so if it's come from across a range of subjects. Um, so if it's come from RE, geography, history, because that makes the evidence better. Um, we also look at the teacher's judgment, so that comes up because sometimes the teacher might have made a decision that as a group we're unsure about, disagree with, um, so we talk about that as well. While she moderates the work of others, Angie's own assessments are put under the spotlight by the other group. What will they make of her assessment of Jack's writing over the last term? Three, four, four. I put three. That's fine. Okay, let's look at that. So these are examples of <clears throat> how to survive a blitz. If you want to survive a blitz and not get blown to bits, just follow these instructions. So you've got number four, strap your gas mask on and leg it to your shelter if you have any left. I mean, there's a, really there good. is a very dry <laughs> voice there. And this one, hundreds of years ago, a man called Robin Hood said, see you later, babe, I'm off to go hunting. <laughs> so there's a style, there's definitely a level four style developing yes. there. And the features were generally, you know, the purpose was clear. And there's an attempt to adopt a viewpoint in some of the writing. I mean, like the, the Robin Hood. No, I've, I've got that. I've got that. And I've got the, the first one. It's the, um, the, the middle, middle bit one. about the depth that I didn't, I didn't find that I had. There's fantastic work, but where the, the, the writer is at this moment in time, it's a little bit um, ambiguous. Again, with this collection, we've got writing that goes back to September. Mm -hmm. yeah. September. And then I think the, the, most recent, the most recent piece of writing is probably the shortest. Having listened to the discussions now, I would say it was a three from my point of view. Jack's one of my more able writers in the class. His work got looked at by the other group and they've talked about it, looked at my judgments, looked at the in-school moderation when I worked with Laura and now we're going to get the feedback on that to see whether our judgments were correct. But I think my annotations have been clear so that they would have found it easy to find my evidence. Um, I'm a bit worried that I might not have included enough um, but this time round we were told only to bring six or eight pieces so that it was easy to look through in the 15 minute section. Um, but I'm a bit worried that I might not have picked the best pieces. So we shall see. When it came to EF3, uh, we put it down as a level three. You were predominantly extracts, which limited the evidence base for the text over, overall. Now that doesn't mean the child's not working at level four, it's just saying the lack of sustained extended writing didn't give us the evidence for level
that level four. And all I'm suggesting is you go back and look up the child as a writer in um, extended writing and, and, and look at that against the collection that you've, you've brought today. Back at school, Angie's adapting her teaching to ensure that she covers the areas highlighted for development by the other moderators. Uh, the feedback from yesterday's um, moderation was positive. Um, I did do enough annotations, I had a good range of works across curricula. However, they felt that there wasn't enough evidence to assess AF3 and AF4 properly because I didn't include full pieces of work, it was only extracts. So based on that, what I'm now doing is giving Jack the opportunity and the rest of the class to actually write a full piece of work, so a full story, giving them the time to do that so then I can assess properly AF3 to see whether he can write a good opening, a good ending and get the full cohesion in between. Hello. 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 For inspiration, Angie plays the class an audio clip, getting them to discuss what they hear. It sounds like he's on a beach it and his waves like he was crashing. Really scared. It's, it's quite like a rocky tide. And you can yeah, and you can hear footsteps like How the you know when there's little puddles on the sand, like he was trending yeah. them because you could like hear the water I think like, like splash. I wanted them to use that in their own writing, so they needed to think about the atmosphere, how they were gonna create that with their own words. When you first listened to it, you wrote down some sounds and it created some pictures in your mind. So what did you write down? Seagulls, dark cave, in, in brackets, echo. Brilliant. Footsteps in the sea. Okay, so let's see if we can put all of that together to create this description of where you are. The boat crashed into a big rock and I went walking off on the beach with my footsteps. I came to a cave, I could hear my own echo and see goals in the air. So you're going to start it off where you arrive on the beach. Miss Sykes wants us to use paragraphs and suspense techniques like ellipsis and different stuff like that. And she wanted us to start our story with a description, action or dialogue. APP hasn't been easy. Um, when you start off, it's very time consuming. You have to get your head around the assessment focuses. There are eight for writing, there are seven for reading. You need to know them. That is a challenge for the future. How do you keep those records for 30, 31 children, but without spending as much time and the detail that I'm doing at the moment with the children that I've got? APP, it has been a real learning curve. It really broke down that, yes, the this child is really strong in this area, this area and this area, but they're a bit weaker here. So it provided a brilliant chance to pick out targets. But I feel I know the children much better as readers and as writers. Gavin, I shouted, be careful. Why wasn't he listening to me? Where am I? What? A beach? That's weird. The sand is so soggy, I'm sinking into it. Footsteps are appearing in front of me, but there's no one there. I woke up on a beach, lying there, still. All I could hear was an eagle squawking and the crash of the waves on the cliffs. 